Hello and welcome to our talk. So if you're here and uh, read this title, Hyperscale Detection and Response, maybe you've faced a similar problem with your SIM that's scaling. Um, and if you were just passing by and thought that this talk was cool, we got you covered. So um, in a few slides, we'll go over our introductions, what was the problem that we faced, how we approached it, how we solved it, uh, a short demo, and then we'll leave you with some future thoughts. So who am I? Uh, I am Nirja Sonavne. I manage eBay's uh, security analytics and uh, detection engineering team. I led the development and delivery of Argus, that's the hyperscale detection and incident response platform for eBay. And um, when I'm not coding or when I'm not working, I'm usually attending music concerts or I like to dance. And uh, if not that, then I'm fostering kittens from uh, the local rescue center. Over to you, Kiran. Thank you, Kinesia. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Kiran Shirali. Uh, so I am. I and my team are Nija's customers in, in eBay. So I lead the detection engineering team. Um, I, I know she said uh, security analytics and detection engineering, so I guess I work for her too. Um, so uh, we are the team that basically write security detections uh, on, on logs, look, you know, does security research, and we look at um, uh, malicious content in support of our 24-7 incident response team. Um, so uh, that's what my team does. And when I'm not in endless meetings and uh, at, at work, I like to go out for hikes, uh, on, on especially on sunny days. If the day is not sunny, I like to sit back with a good fiction book. So let me set the problem statement as to what I, what I, or what we want to talk about and what we wanted to solve, right? And also give you the context as to how we got there and as to how uh, uh, eBay functions, because that context is very important. Now, before I jump into that, I am curious. Um, a quick show of hands of all of you who work in incident response or you support incident response through like a sister function like detection engineering, security tools, or sim development, who are all in the room. Okay, that's quite a few. Awesome. So let me set some context as to how we function. I'm pretty sure this is very similar to how your uh, uh, teams work. Um, so we've got very specialized teams in eBay. Um, we've got assets uh, that we need to monitor. So somebody from detection engineering will go and um, uh, work with these uh, 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 owners. You know, we do modeling on what potential attacks can happen on them. We analyze what logging artifacts are there on these systems. We then work with a log onboarding team to get these logs onto a centralized set. Right? Uh, we write security content on these logs. We push it to production. And then when something malicious happens, alerts are generated from those contents, and our incident response team, aka CSERT, uh, responds to them. So while not on this figure, we primarily use ServiceNow as a case management system, wherein all our incident engineers are on there. Uh, but all analysis of logs and investigations is done on this centralized SEM. Centralized now let me spend a quick moment on infrastructure, because it's, it's important. Uh, we've got multiple zones, but at a very high level, think of two large zones inside of uh, eBay networks. One is MP, what we call as marketplaces. So that's got any infrastructure that supports eBay.com. That's production infrastructure. Um, it's, um, I mean, the, the, there is an in infrastructure engineering team that manages this whole zone. Then we also have Corp. Corp is anything to, uh, that has got to do with employees and employee services. There's a separate engineering team for that, uh, infrastructure engineering team. So two infrastructure engineering teams got their own stuff, their own CMDBs, adds a level of complexity, right? O on top of that, um, we are predominantly on-prem. We manage our own data centers. So almost 95% of our deployment is all on-prem. Uh, we've got a little bit of footprint on public cloud like Google Cloud and uh, um, uh, Azure, but predominantly it's on-prem. On, on also, being a mature company, we uh, essentially have a lot of custom stuff. So out of the box, connectors don't really work for us. We have to build things to be able to get logging artifacts. So all of this adds, adds complexity to our monitoring challenge. Now, remember, I also said about scale of marketplaces, right? There's a lot of scale, there's a lot of uh, servers now that 
adds the problem of scaling in, in terms of large scale security logging our data sets. I will share numbers in a little bit about how much our day to day logging uh, 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 ingestion is at, uh, but scale is a, is a problem. And then finally, when we started this journey, we were on a lot of unreliable data transport protocols. So log loss had become a huge issue for us. So all of these were the, the, the problems that we needed to solve. Um, and and um, this, this talk is about, about this. Right? So what did we do? What they, how did we solve this? Our monitoring and detection and you know, um, response journey started almost a decade back. Uh, somewhere around at, uh, 2014. At that time, we wanted to expand coverage. We went out at that uh, and, and looked at the more popular sims out there. We settled on the most popular sim. We bought the sim. We um, uh, the infosec team deployed it. Set up all the infrastructure for indexers, uh, you know, forwarders, uh, search at clusters. We um, reached out to the teams within marketplaces and CARB, got all syslogs. I know syslogs are very unreliable, uh, but nonetheless, we got it. We started writing detection rules on it. We uh, piped our alerts into, uh, into uh, service now for our incident response team uh, to work on. Um, one terabyte per day logging became two, two became four, four became eight. Uh, I don't know, some of you are in incident response, some of you work with incident response. Every time I talk to my incident response team, they go, oh yeah, get us more logs. Get us more data. Get us more context. To err on the side of caution, just get us everything, right? So to meet that need, we kept on expanding and expanding and expanding. And then we started feeling the burn of licensing fees at 20 terabytes per day. At that time, we realized this is not tenable. This is not scalable. We got to do something. Right, so we went back to the drawing board and we started thinking, what could we do? How can we still ensure that we are reducing risk for eBay, expanding monitoring coverage, but not breaking the bank? And we started internally looking at what could maybe eBay's infrastructure teams provide us, how can we solve this problem? And that is when Nija's team came in and helped us solve this, solve this issue. So I'm going to hand it back to her to walk us through the rest of the story. Thank you, Kiran. So as Kiran was suggesting, we had two major problems to solve. Uh, one was the reliability issue, and the other was scaling issue. So how did we go about the reliability issue? Uh, while we were researching, we realized that one of our eBay's internal infrastructure team called as Unified Monitoring Platform leverages elastic beats to reliably collect logs from marketplace hosts. These Elastic Beats agents reliably, uh, reliably sent logs to the eBay's infra ingress and then from this ingress we added our pipeline that was three components predominantly kafka apache fling and hadoop why we chose these three components uh, the the choice was straightforward for us kafka is a distributed stream processing log collection and transportation mechanism which integrates seamlessly with apache flink uh, again kafka can be used to transport uh, reliably uh, transport data reliably between different components of a sim so uh, moving on to flink flink is a very robust and a very strong powerful stream processing engine that worked well for us and at the massive scale you can basically scale it to however you want to moving on to this solved our reliability problem and then moving on to the scaling problem we wanted to say uh, to save these uh, logs like huge petabytes of logs reliably and uh, cost effectively and while we were thinking hadoop was a no-brainer for us because it has a practically flat or linear cost for all the ingestion and again we had an ebay's internal team supporting our hadoop uh, clusters so uh, the synergy of kafka apache flink and hadoop uh, was uh, the way to go for us while we were discussing about the data pipeline reliability and scaling issue, we realized that we can leverage Flink and its massive computing power to build a detection or an event pipeline. And then we leverage Flink SQL to build detection logic and reliably get the data, build the detection logic, and sync alerts to ServiceNow, which is again our case management system. So uh, the, the whole concept is 
called as Argus. And these three components are the open source components that work as a SIM as well as a data analytics platform for us. I'll quickly go over a short demo to, sh to show how easy it is for a detection engineer to write a detection use case using Flink SQL and for an incident response engineer to go on ServiceNow, look at the alerts, and perform investigations using Hadoop UI. So this is how a Flink SQL dashboard looks like. Uh, Whenever you are trying to build it, it may look a bit different. Uh, this is a Rios dashboard. Again, Rios is the team that maintains Apache Flink and Kafka for us. Uh, they've added a SQL editor for us. And when a detection engineer goes to write a detection script, they'll usually use this editor, uh, write the script, uh, name it, use the SQL version that they want to, and then go on editing their uh, Flink SQL script. So I'll go over the different components of the script one by one and, uh, and show you how you can leverage uh, the power of Link SQL to build a detection use case. As you can see, you can import any user-defined function here. Again, a user-defined function can be written in Java, so the possibilities are endless. You can create a function using your uh, user imported user-defined function and uh, use it in your script. Now let's talk about the three components of the script. The first being the log source table. This table will imagine a Kafka stream. So the log source table will get the data, pull the, in, uh, pull the data from the input log stream. Then we are going to do some detection logic on the log stream and then sync the, the relevant alerts or the, or the logs that match your detection logic back to the Kafka stream. And then you can route it anywhere you want to. So uh, I define a, a, a log source table with the relevant fields. I create an alert sync table and define it with the relevant fields. Uh, here I'm using the connector type Kafka. You can use uh, any connector type that matches your architecture. The third component is the actual detection logic component in the script. Here we are inserting into alert sync. Again, it's pretty simple. Uh, you can plug your detection logic, the uh, the uh, fields that match the detection logic from the log source table will be inserted into alert sync. Once uh, the detection logic is, uh, is, is complete, the detection engineer will basically save the script and then spin off a Flink job from this. And these are all the running Flink jobs. Uh, again, they are running on streaming data. So all these uh, detections will continuously run on a real-time data. This is where the detection engineer's work stops and an incident response engineer work starts. So this is a, a ServiceNow dashboard where you can see test alerts. I will walk you through one of the alerts. So when uh, an incident response engineer gets an alert, these are some alert metadata fields, some additional information. Again, we've worked with our internal ServiceNow automation team to get a customized SIM drill down uh, link in the alert itself. When a CSAT engineer clicks on this SIM drill down alert, SIM drill down link, it redirects them to a UI. Now this UI is what we call Zeta. Again, you can use any uh, other UI of your choice. You can use any OLAP, or it can be as simple as a Hive query to interface with your Hadoop backend. Um, and I'll go over what is a drill down. So, you know, once uh, an alert is triggered, it can be triggered by one matching event or multiple matching events. So uh, when a incident response engineer sees an alert, they want to have additional context, additional information, and want to be able to correlate it with additional data to make an informed decision. So while they are routed to a Hadoop UI, we have a pre-populated query that is the drill down search that will be running and will give them the results and the relevant data in, in seconds. And once the, uh, the relevant data is given, Again, you can plug and play your own logic here. And once the, uh, the, the, uh, the drill down is running and it gives the uh, output, they can easily use this uh, to make an informed decision whether the alert is benign or a true positive. Uh, now, what should be our future state, you say? 
So, uh, you know, we are currently leveraging Argus as our secondary SIM, and we are in the process of migrating all the uh, all the content from our third party SIM to Argus. In the future state, we want to completely get rid of a third party SIM, and we want to build an ingress that is getting logs from Corp as well as marketplace, and then leverage Argus as our centralized SIM and completely move off of our dependency of a third party SIM. Um, and how did this approach help us? Let's hear it from the customer. Over to you, Kiran. Thank you, Nisha. That was pretty cool, huh? That was, that's a lot of content that we had to uh, put together so that you can digest it in a 20-minute uh, demo. But the gist of this, this whole presentation was that open source components tend to work, right? Uh, it has worked for us. It will work for you, too. Uh, we used Apache, uh, Kafka, Apache Flink, Hadoop. Uh, you can, too. You can use um, uh, Elastic Beats to basically get data sets. We built our own ingress. There's a custom ingress, but you can use something like Logstash. So if you are thinking about open source components for your incident response team, your detection uh, uh, team, you can come and talk to us. There was a lot of things that we already evaluated. We can give you suggestions. Um, if you think that you know, a detailed blog post about how we set this up would help you, let us know. We have uh, contact details right at the end of this uh, talk. You can reach out to us or just come up after this, after this conversation. Also, um, you may think, oh, is this a lot of uh, uh, coding, scripting? How would my security engineers be comfortable with this? So we use the principle of keep it simple. Right. You saw Nija walk us through a, a fling script job. That's essentially a detection rule that has been templated. So they gave us these templates. So my team can only focus on the SQL content that is needed to look for that detection. Right. When, when alerts fire and then um, an alert is you know, generated, incident response is looking at it, the drill down searches immediately go to a templatized query on, on Hadoop. So that way, an incident engineer only needs to tweak the query and run it. And they don't need to relearn a lot of these things. So by making it simple for the, the security engineers on our team, we were able to adopt the system and, and you know, embrace the system. Um, now, in summary, how did this help us? First of all, remember I said we were breaking the bank at 20 terabytes per day? We are now at 55 terabytes per day in security logging. Per, um, and um, we are having higher coverage. Our CISO is no longer complaining about my uh, uh, you know, SIM costs anymore. Um, large data sets. We are now able to query large data sets. And this is important because we're thinking about our future. And in a, just hold on to that thought. I'll come to it in, in a few seconds. We're no longer dependent on customer support of a, of a vendor. Um, if we need anything, we need something customized, all we do is we, we just turn around, Nija sitting right next to us, we go, hey, Nija, can you build this for us? Right? And, and we get that support. We have embraced open source, which means that we can build, you know, uh, sorry, we can contribute back to the community. And then finally, we are thinking about machine learning because we've got these large data sets now. We never had it in our third party uh, SIM. And we are looking at what can we build uh, using ML or simple ML models to get better insights. And our hope is a year from now, we can come back, sit on the, stand on the same stage, and walk you through our journey of ML and Argus. But till then, this was our talk. Thank you for coming. Any questions? Uh, th thank you. This was a really great talk. Um, so in terms of like the open source, you mentioned contributing back. How do you uh, budget time for engineers to contribute back to these open source libraries? And what types of things are you trying to contribute back? Hi, I can take that. So um, just an example of how we would do that. There have been a lot of customization while we are trying to connect to you know, some, um, some public clouds like GCP. Um, we have Flink that is our, uh, that's kind of you know, tweaked to our system and our architecture. So if there is a connector that needs to be built uh, to, to leverage the uh, power of the GCP pub sub and get the logs onto our pipeline, that's Argus, uh, we end up doing a lot of custom stuff. Uh, you know, recently we had this example of having a, 
uh, a synchronous PubSub connector that's Flink GCP connector, and then we had to build an asynchronous one. It was funny enough that there wasn't an asynchronous uh, Flink GCP connector built, and then while we were building our own stuff and our own connector, we thought of, hey, we can just you know contribute it back. So uh, these are some examples where you know while we are tweaking these uh, these uh, systems for our own custom architecture, we realize that while we are working, we are also you know we can we can shed that time and then just like hone it for uh, more open source uh, you know contributions. Thank you. I guess this makes it simpler for everyone. Uh, so thank you, though. This is a great presentation. Um, I, I do want to know what, what were some of the alternatives that you had discussed or considered in this process that uh, you, you didn't immediately go, wow, this is great. We could just go directly to Kafka and then uh, automate. Yeah, nobody has that insight. So what, what are some of the considerations? There's also the consideration of saving some of the um, the the FTE or the, peop the people power within the company and outsourcing that to someone who has an off off the shelf solution that could handle maybe some of these uh, use cases um, or things like Spark, you know, to handle streaming. I know that they have a streaming uh, service too. So were there other kind of uh, alternatives that you considered and um, eliminated? So we did, we did look at a couple of uh, solutions out there when we were looking. Um, evaluating this uh, situation, right? We were looking at other sims, uh, other stuff, but one of the push that came from all the way from the top is that there is a, there's a culture of open source that our uh, CTO and our CISO is embracing. And that has been a, a strong factor because we use it, there's the aspect of also contributing back. Also, the second thing that uh, went very strongly into this factor is the fact that a lot of this the platforms were being used by infrastructure teams uh, within eBay, so we didn't need to reinvent the wheel. And we could just leverage an existing platform, take it only for you know our portions, like think of it as a cluster just for us, and be able to write stuff uh, specifically for us. So it was that combination, again, for our scale and what we wanted to achieve, the pros and cons, this was like the best uh, pro, and that's why we went here. Again, it has not been, you're right, it has not been like a, we woke up in the morning and said, yeah, today we're going to do Flink and SQL. This, like I said, st the journey started all the way back from 2014. Uh, the solution, this, I think it was what, 2018, 2019, was when we were, we started on this, uh, on this plan of Flink and the data pipeline and eventually it became an event pipeline for us. Can I quickly follow up on that? Sure. Uh, so, Outside of these considerations for your specific company's uh, requirements, um, are there things that uh, the audience can take away that were considerations that were eliminated along that process that were heavy considerations that people should be considering here? So the best thing that I would say as a takeaway is a lot of these things, a lot of these uh, uh, technology stacks, we fear them, at least we did, because they were unknowns. Once we started using them, uh, you quickly realize that they're very easy to use. They, uh, as long as you have some kind of a engineering background, you can write you know, code that, is, uh, that can reach out to REST APIs and things like that. So that's what I would say. Just look at them, um, you know, just play with them, and you will see that a lot of these, these, these tech stacks actually do work. And that's what I would say uh, should be a takeaway from this talk. Um, and if in case you're also asking for any technologies that we tested and like thought that this isn't working, uh, we did try a few of those. We tried Druid, we tried Elastic, we tried um, you know S3. So we tried a bunch of those. And then I think these three components fit the best for us. So in terms of technology, yes, we did try a few things. Um, I think I speak for a lot of people here. The a write up on this would be. Awesome. I, I, okay. This is a lot of good information. Um, probably the second thing was, how many millions was Splunk costing you in the first couple of months? <laughs> we should talk after the talk. Yeah, you should talk after the talk. <laughs> yes. <Good job. laughs>
Yeah, just our licensing fees did become very expensive, and because of our scale, this made a lot of sense for us, right? And this this would work for us. I, I know we are out of time, so if you have any questions, please, we'll be right here after the talk. Please come up. But thank you so much for attending our talk.